The following program is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza. And welcome to the Sports Roundtable, another edition of discussions on high school football. Boy, was it an exciting week in high school football for New Hanover County Schools. Three of our schools played, one played or actually had a week off. But we're going to talk about all of that coming up here on the Sports Roundtable. I'm Tom Lamont, your host, and joining me on the show is Coach Earl Smith of the New Hanover Wildcats. And Coach, wow. Uh, your team now two and two on the season, uh, a game in which you got behind again, 28 to six in the first half, but the Wildcats respond and come out with a 41 to 40 victory over Garner Magnet. What a, what a great game for you. It was, you know, our defense uh, played their hearts out. Everybody played their hearts out, but I think the, the, the key was that uh, we, we, they turned the ball over three times. And I think we turned it over once and, uh, you know, Blake and our receivers finally got into a groove and connected and, uh, one of our young receivers, actually, uh, Jaheim Marshall, scored three TDs, and Blake got over 300 yards passing, and uh, it was uh, it was a heck of a game for sure. Well, you mentioned Blake, you know, you, your quarterback Blake Walston. He struggled early in this contest, had a couple of interceptions, as you said. It took a little bit of time to get the offense going, but what was it that kind of turned it around? Had a slow start, but then he comes on and gets over 300 yards in, in total offense in passing. So what what a great night for him, but started off slow. Yeah, we had what, what, what happened was we, we what receiver Jason Billingsley, Jaheim, and a couple of the younger guys made some big catches. It just kind of caught on and. They just got into a, to a good rhythm there, and uh, you know we did what we had to do at the end. You know we clocked it with uh, two seconds to go, no timeouts, and uh, you know Blake, you'll see it. Hopefully, we'll get this on the film. Uh, Blake hit uh, Jaheim in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown, and ball game over. Great job for the Wildcats. Let's take a look at some of the of the video of the highlights from this contest. A, a big win for New Hanover. Our special teams were excellent. Uh, here's a kickoff uh, return by Jacob. Jones and almost takes it back. Later on in the game, he returns a punt for a touchdown. So he had a big night for us uh, specialty. You know, defensively, you know, we caused uh, two fumbles. We covered one here, you know, they were in the red zone. Big hit there, got it back. And uh, also an interception. We, you know, we had the three, three, two ratio with turnovers, which is huge. Here, uh, Blake's gonna connect with uh, Senior Jason Billingsley. Jason just got back from injury, hadn't played in the game yet. Big catch, big first down. Next play here, we get a nice break on the ball. It's tipped up, and uh, senior Diego Yanes gets gets the pick, gives us the ball back. Uh, Blake comes back here. We run a wheel route coming up to Jason, and uh, set up perfect with a little fake screen. Nice throw right in, the, right in the basket right there. Got it down here and we punched that thing in. As I said earlier, you know, Jaheim Marshall had three touchdowns. Here's the first, a little quick slant. Catches it with the crowd. You know, Blake gets it right in there where it needs to be without, you know, chance to intercept. Like I said earlier, we, we just did a great job on special teams. We worked hard all week to correct some things on the kickoff, punt, and, uh, here we do a great job of getting down there, breaking down, and making it stop right there at the you know 22 yard line. You know we've got uh, got our running backs pretty much all healthy now. Uh, Travis Lee, who's been carrying the load all year, has a great game, very consistent. And then we got Jabez Howard back. You know he's a thousand yard rusher, and he he also contributed. Just trying to get him back in game shape. Um, Big sack here by junior uh, defensive tackle Jeremiah Bancroft. Defensive front played great all night. All night. I think we've got another sack coming up by our defense. And uh, especially the second half, our defensive front put pressure on this quarterback because he's a good one. And uh, see right there. 
Uh, here's Blake doing what he can do. Not too many quarterbacks can throw back across their body. And he, he hits uh, sophomore uh, Landon Ferris here on a, it's a, uh, ends up being like a little crossing route. Landon makes a good catch, picks up big yards for us. Here is, uh, here's the punt return I was telling you about earlier by junior Jacob Jones. This, this guy's quite an athlete. He, uh, we get some pretty good blocks for him. Fields it right there and then slips through and good block right there. Another good distraction, makes a cut back across and uh, this was huge right here. This uh, cut it to two touchdowns at the time. We were down, you know, 21-0, 28-6 and uh, that was big, big for us. Uh, senior Rashad uh, Rogers, our returning defensive end, uh, does a great job here with the sack. He just turned it up in the second half. He's fired up there. This next catch, throwing catch, is just uh, really shows the talent of Jason Billingsley. Blake drops it right in over his head, catches it, and uh, again, this is a big key play here because we went on down to score. And I think this next, uh, this is uh, Blake hitting Jaheim on his second touchdown. Again, a junior. Another slant. We've got two more. Hopefully, we can get them in because this, 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 this is where it comes down to the last few seconds. I think the next play, there's a couple defensive plays here. Again, a sack by Rashid there. And then this is when they try to do the flea flicker fumble it, we pick it up and get, we get the ball back right here. And then coming up should be the, uh, the play that Blake hits Jaheim on a fade route down to the two. This was uh, huge, because when we got the ball back, we had it was 55 seconds left. Here it is, yeah. Coming up right here. We'll fade, fade, catches it. It's down to two. Blake took the team up. There was three seconds when they went on the clock and clocked it with two seconds. And then coming up, I was going to show it again here. Another play. How wow, this got in here. Good check. Another good catch by uh, Billingsley on the sideline. This next one should be it. Nope. <laughs> a lot of big plays in the second half offensively. It was a 41 to 40 win. A lot, a lot of Green. great highlights, and the yeah. Wildcats really battled. And that's the screen to Jabez Howard. You can see Jabez is just about back 100%. And, uh, this week off is going to really help us. Here it is here. Two seconds left. Do a little slant, peel out, throw and catch, ball game over. I mean, it was just a one for the books. <laughs> Great win for you, Coach. Obviously um, got behind early, but your, your team battled back. And offensively, getting those players back that have been injured helped to get that running game going to help supplement the passing for, for Blake. Just a overall great performance for the Wildcats. You're going to take this win now, two and two. Um, you got a, a bye week. Uh, obviously, the storm, uh, Florence, is, is out there. And that's going to be a factor this week for, mm -hmm. for New Hanover County Schools. And, and then you'll be able to uh, regroup for Mid-Eastern Conference play coming up in your next action uh, later in September against uh, South Brunswick. So uh, I, I know you're going to be looking forward to having some time off to kind of regroup and get ready for conference play. Absolutely. And according to our trainer, we'll have everybody back. So that's just going to be huge. All right. That's the head coach of the New Hanover Wildcats, Earl Smith, victorious as the Wildcats defeat Gardner Magnet. By the score of 41 to 40, we'll be back with more of the Sports Roundtable right after this. Welcome back to the Sports Roundtable. I'm Tom Lamont, your host. We continue our discussions on high school football from last week. And joining us now is the head coach of the Ashley Screaming Eagles, uh, Jeff Turner. And Jeff, uh, your team had a, had a week off, a bye week. Uh, you're off to a great start, two and one. What things did you work on this week? Yeah, we just worked on a lot of fundamentals, basic uh, stance and start, just basic stuff that we need to go back to and sort of clean up. Um, and I think the kids did a pretty good job um, and we, we gave the coaches and the players a break Friday. 
not knowing about the storm until I got home Friday night. Right. Or else I might not have done that. But, uh, you know, it was a good week. It's always a good week to sort of take a step back and, and try to, uh, you know, get back to the basics and regather our thoughts and where we need to be. Let's talk about the offense so far this season for, mm -hmm. uh, for the Screaming Eagles. Um, what do you like so far and, and what tweaks do you need to make to help uh, the team going forward? Yeah, you know, a new offense, uh, wing T, it's, um, it's a work in progress and it's a progression. It seems, you know, I, I watch it in practice and it just seems like we're getting better. We're getting more comfortable with, with the blocking schemes and guys are starting to understand where they need to be. There's still a lot to go because, you know, when you look at the teams that run the wing T, like East Doop and Wallace Rose Hill and the successful ones, they've been doing it for, you know, years and sometimes decades. So it takes time. But I like what, what's happening. Uh, obviously, we need to grow from it and keep getting better. Um, but uh, I, I like what I see. I, I think the kids are starting to understand a lot about it. And, and the more we, we do and the more we practice, obviously, the better we'll get with it. On the defensive side, what positives uh, are you seeing at this, at this point? And what areas do you really think that the team needs some improvement? I'll tell you, we lost so much. and. Um, we need our improvement defensively. We just need to get back to basics. Our D line of, of not running upfield and and doing the basic fundamentals and 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 holding their their you know gaps and uh, and I think I think the the young secondary has done a pretty good job and I think you know they'll continue to. We got some kids out there that hadn't played football in probably two three years. So I'm I'm encouraged by what I see with those guys. Uh, the young linebacker core is sort of, we, we have a new guy, uh, uh, Jacob Ellis just came in. Um, he was on the, the offensive side and said, let's try him at linebacker. So we're, we're reeling a little bit, but we want to get those guys. But I'll tell you, I, I, I like what I saw last week. It sort of gives us a chance to put some new guys in and to test them and see if they can, they can handle that. But they're working on fundamentals, basic fundamentals, stand start alignment, and just recognizing uh, what they need to do. What does a, a storm like that we're seeing out there, obviously with Hurricane uh, Florence out there mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, obviously school uh, going to be canceled, what does that do in terms of uh, planning for you? Well, first it puts things in perspective because of the, uh, you know, when you look in the, the storm and the power and, uh, uh, you know, hurricanes, uh, you know, really the, the first thought is, okay, let's take care of our kids, let's make sure everyone's taking care of their families, let's make sure... You know, I think I think we're all in the same boat here that we, you know, we all uh, want to figure out what our next step is, whether uh, we're boarding up the house or we're getting out of town or what is. So that's the number one concern. And, uh, you know, we're off the rest, you know, uh, school is canceled uh, due to the hurricane. And, and uh, you know, we just need to, you know, the main thing is, is taking care of that and hoping and praying that the families and our community and, uh, you know, and maybe that hurricane will take a shift and head out to sea or something. But if not, you know, the main thing is let's let's make sure our everyone families are okay. So that's the we'll close out our, our practice today and in, in doing all that stuff. Well, coach, doesn't look like we're gonna see any games this week. But again, you'll probably be returning to action in the Mid-Eastern Conference play uh, September 21st uh, as you'll be hosting West Brunswick. So again, uh, thanks again for being on the program, and we'll talk with you next time. Thank you very much. All right. Be the safe. head coach, yep. you too, coach. Coach Jeff Turner, the head coach of the Ashley Screaming Eagles. We'll be back with more of the Sports Roundtable right after this. You are watching the Sports Roundtable. I'm Tom Lamont, your host, and we continue our discussion on high school football. Joining us now is the head coach of the John T. Hoggard Vikings, Craig Underwood. Coach, uh, your team now 2-1 and one on the season, a tough loss. It was a battle indeed uh, against uh, Carolina Forest. Uh, in the end, you lose 42-35, but uh, a really, really good football game. It was. It was a great game. Um, coach Morris at Carolina Forest runs a great program. Um, they played extremely well, and we made – some crucial mistakes that, that you just can't make and beat good football teams. You know, we turned the ball over, we missed some tackles, uh, had a special teams turnover. Uh, just, you know, you can't do those things and win big games. So um, very frustrating at the same time. I think it's a moment that, you know, it's early in the season still. We can learn from it. And uh, all, the, all the mistakes are fixable. That's what I'm most encouraged about. And our guys 
even though we were down, they, they really fought, and we had a chance to win at the end. So Yeah, your defense struggled early, but they, they got better during the game. You, mm -hmm. you, were, you were able to come back, and mm -hmm. certainly uh, it was a game when you had some inconsistencies on offense, and, right. and the defense uh, struggled early for the first time this season. But you, in the end, it was, a, it was still a battle. It still could have gone either it, it way. It was. You know, when you look at the first quarter, we, we opened with a touchdown. They answered with a touchdown. Then we had our first turnover. Uh, which resulted in another touchdown, and then we have the special teams turnover, and you know we were in a 21-7 hole, and the defense hadn't been off the field yet. <laughs> you know it was, uh, it was, uh, it, it, that that piece was frustrating, and it felt uncharacteristic of, of obviously who we try to be. So uh, again, though the the silver lining is our guys fought back really hard. I mean, again we came back and tied it, had a chance there at the end to win the game, and just couldn't quite get it done. Coach, let's take a look at some of the highlights from your, your game against Carolina Forest. All right. Uh, this is the first series. Uh, guys came out really, uh, they, they run a great scheme there. They attacked the whole field, do a good job of it. But that was Brooks carried down the line, making a big play. Uh, this is our first touchdown. So we got a three and out on defense. And uh, then we were able to answer with that. Jordan Rickey had a big night again. He's really come along as a running back. Uh, but running right behind Bill Moore there, opening up a hole for him. Uh, so those guys doing a great job. Uh, here we are coming back, um, possession a little later, this is C.J. Pipkin. Um, P C.J. was our leading receiver for the night. Uh, and you see just the, the effort after the catch. Uh, he does a great job of ball security and the effort after the catch. Uh, this is defense fighting down in the, the red zone, uh, trying to work on that red zone defense and getting stops there. Uh, that's Garrett Manning. Garrett had a big night, uh, I think 10 tackles on the night. So uh, he just continues to improve as a junior linebacker for us. Tell you their their talent and, and offensive skill was uh, the best we had seen so far this year, and uh, gave us some great matchups. But you know that's what you need to see to get ready for the playoffs uh, in in the division. You know we're having to move to four double A this year, and, and that's a tough deal. That was Garrett Manning again on a uh, on, a, on a tackle there. Back on the offensive side, uh, this is Chris Tootle in at quarterback. Uh, able to pull it down uh, and go get us some good first down yardage there. Chris, uh, obviously, his focal point is that, is that receiver for us, but uh, we're trying to find ways to use him in uh, just multiple ways. Big, uh, big, strong, great athlete kid. This is uh, CJ Pipkin again. That's Gabe Johnson. Uh, Gabe, uh, he, he really came a long way in this game, particularly the pressure situations of the second half. Uh, made some big time completions under pressure, so I was really happy to see that. Uh, this is Tayshawn James at corner. It's a great job of shedding a block, making a tackle and speed option. Um, uh, Tayshawn's a leader for us. Uh, it was great to get Isaiah Kemp back this game. and uh, Our secondary almost at full strength, still got one safety that's uh, got a nagging injury, but that gave number seven to Mickey Yates a chance to get in there and, and uh, make some plays. Uh, he's actually going to stick his nose in on this one. That was him that came down and filled that tackle. Excuse me. Got back on the offensive side. Jordan Ricky again, just plowing forward. Uh, the guys opening up holes. Uh, that was Kashawn White pulling through for him there. Uh, getting into an empty set and finding Chris Toodle. Hit him in stride. Uh, just a, the old turf got him. Every now and then, you know, you get that, that sniper who jumps up and gets you. So, uh, but a good job of hitting him. This is a big momentum play. Uh, Brooks Carey, again, senior defensive end, uh, block punt. We come out in the second half, you know, we were down two scores at halftime. Uh, they came out and we said we came back and tied up the football game. And uh, it was a, a first drive touchdown and a block punt. Uh, you know, several plays to get us right back in the mix. So, uh, really proud of the, the fight in our team. That, that's something we're going to build off of. Uh, here you see Gabe um, uh, rolling out another uh, big completion for a first down there. Coming back, this is the tying score right here. This is uh, uh, to CJ Pipkin at the pylon. Uh, again, CJ had a big night. Gabe had a, a, a big night. Okay, there were a lot of positives that came from it. So yeah, sophomore quarterback. Exactly. That's a young guy. You know, he's a young guy, and it's his. You know, this is his third varsity football game. So uh, coming back on this next series, uh, working towards getting a stop defensively. And you know, unfortunately, they were able to punch one in there at the end. We had a, 
a little bit of a questionable pass interference call on if it was fourth and 12 and you know uh, you got to make plays where you don't put it in the officials hands you know we made too many mistakes but uh, fourth and 12 we thought we had a good pass breakup and got the flag and you know they ended up scoring off of it so well coach of course uh, with uh, the hurricane uh, Florence uh, in the area obviously mm -hmm. school being canceled uh, your scheduled game at uh, Purnell sweat won't happen this That's week right. and I know you you'd like to get back on the field after yes, a we tough would. loss we like would. this but I guess you'll just be preparing for that next contest whenever that is that's right I mean we got to kind of go with what the uh, the schedule allows at this point um, you know we hoping all the families and you know just Wilmington in general is, is able to get through this storm safely and, and you know I heard coach Turner speaking earlier you know we just want to be there for our players uh, through this hopefully today we get a good day's practice in and uh, and we'll get back to it with conference play when we get back all right, that's the head coach of the John T. Hoggard Vikings, Craig Underwood. The Vikings now 2-1 and one on the season. We'll be back with more of the Sports Roundtable right after this. And welcome back one more time to the Sports Roundtable. I'm Tom Lamont, your host, and joining us now is Ashad Yeoman, the head coach of the Laney Buccaneers. And last week, Coach, we talked about what it would take to get a W for the Bucks, and you got the W, first win of the season for, for Laney, beating Triton 23-15. Tell us about the game. Man, uh, we jumped on it pretty fast. Uh, we kicked off to them, um, <clears throat> got a three and out, and then like two big plays right in that first quarter, took us in for a touchdown, and it was like, wow. That was the first for, for us, you know, all season long to, one, have those types of big plays where we got 20 yards or more and then um, putting points on the board first. So the momentum, uh, we caught it early. <clears throat> and then, you know, again, we went uh, three and out and then a couple of drives later, put another one in the end zone. Um, Noah, um, Noah Inger, uh, fullback, uh, new to this team this year and hadn't played football in quite some time. And is starting to get on the roll a little bit, man, with the ball in his hands. and. He just ran tough all night long, and, and that's just a testament to our offensive line as well, the job that they did and just, you know, getting better every single week. Yeah, Noah got those first two touchdowns for you for the Bucks. Got off to a great start. Got a lot of great highlights to take a look at. Let's Absolutely. take a look at those now, Coach, as uh, your team defeats Triton 23-15. So this is the very first play of the game, you know, way to set the tone for us defensively. <clears throat> that's Jeremiah Ennis. You know, he played last year on the defensive end side, and we made him our Mike linebacker. He's done a great job of being the, uh, the leader of our defense, and um, that's a great job of a corner coming up. Um, again, a new guy, um, Treyon Durant, he's a senior as well, coming up and making a big play for us. And then this is our first drive here. They had us a little bit of the dead to rights a little bit, and there is um, Matthew um, Sims making a big play for us. You know, we broke a tackle. We, we talk about a lot of you know, dirty runs from our offensive line and uh, running backs. You know, putting those types of things together, and then there's Noah Inger coming up with a, a big play, breaking some tackles, and then you know, like, he's, like I said, he, he's he's a little cross player that, that hadn't played football in a while, but we're just glad to have him, and he's a great kid, um, brings a lot of hard toughness to our offense. So, real proud of the job he's done, and then <clears throat> that's one of my senior tackles there. We didn't have him last year. Uh, Messiah Moore doing a great job of coming up and stuffing the run. And you can't see it there, but that's my defensive end. Stephen Warshaw doing a great job of squeezing the edge and coming up with a huge tackle. That's one of the things that we try to preach is that, you know, you're not going to make every play, but if you do your job, the ones that you have come to you, they'll come, they'll, uh, you'll make them. And then there's a big play by Devon Shepard, one of our returning players, um, look at, looking for a lot of big things from him. And then <clears throat> there's another senior player there that didn't play last season. Um, and uh, Colin Vanderhart coming up with a huge scrape and tackle there um, off the edge. And again, there's Jeremiah Ennis coming up with some huge stops. So defensively, as you can see, we were, we were pretty prepared because obviously this is, it's hard to simulate the wing T when you're not a wing T team. But for us, it was almost like facing our own team um, throughout that week. So we did a great, great job of preparing all week long, um, you know, talking to the guys, keeping them motivated, keeping them up because you know, we hadn't won one yet, and there's another dirty run right there by another senior who I'm, I'm pretty proud of, of Gavin Hildreth. Um, hadn't really had the opportunity to play very much, and then he just stuck with it, worked hard all season long, and you know, now he's a starter for us and doing a great job up, up at the uh, running back position. And you know, Again, there's some more defensive highlights where our guys are coming up, stuffing the play, and then again, there's Messiah Moore. Again, we had a little stunt on, um, kind of, you know, saw some things that they were doing, and, 
and he came over with a huge play there for us. And then here's a field goal right before halftime where our kicker, <clears throat> um, Walter Smith, comes up with a huge kick. Give us some momentum going into halftime. So kind of got things going again. Um, and then here's a tip, tip ball right here by um, Toby Stone and a big play um, by defensive tackle Masai Moore again. Uh, just being in the right place at the right time. And then again, here it is in the second half, we're kind of getting some things going. There's Noah Inger again on a big run uh, right here. Uh, again, tough kid to bring down, uh, great vision. I think that look, those lacrosse skills are coming into play a little bit there. And then um, there's another big play uh, coming up eventually, but there's Noah Inger getting the ball again. Uh, oh, excuse me, this is right, this is, uh, right before halftime there. Um, and that's Noah Ingram finishing it off uh, for a big run uh, there in that second half. And then there's Tyron Jones, um, great young man, uh, proud of the effort that he's been given. Uh, another senior, uh, getting some quality minutes. He actually played defensive end for us last year, and I put him in a little bit of a different situation, a defensive tackle, and he's taken to it. He's one of those team players that, uh, that you try to, try to look for in these young guys nowadays. A lot of times you get kids who you know, think they play only one position and, you know, that's the position that they played all their lives and um, we asked him to do something a little bit different and he's taken to it and that's, that's just being the ultimate team player and that's what you try to instill in some of these guys um, throughout the team. Like, we'll do whatever it takes to, to make the team better. If, as long as you're on the field and get an opportunity to play, take advantage of that opportunity. Coach, you had a lot of shout outs for a lot of different players oh, in yeah. this game. So it was really great to see how the Bucks responded. You're 0-3 on the season. Yes. You're on the road. The kids haven't given up. And mm -hmm. and in and, and this game, again, a lot of folks stepped up for you. They sure did. And then, you know, I didn't even have to say much before the game, which was very impressive. You know, I, I said a little bit, but then the team just kind of took, uh, took over and and, and as a coach, when you see that kind of leadership, that's huge because it means so much more for, the, for these young men uh, to hear it from their teammates. And just to hear those seniors kind of step up and take that role, that leadership role for this team was huge um, and getting the momentum and the excitement that we need to do. Well, Coach, this was a scheduled week for you to have a bye. It looks like yeah. with the storm out there, it's going to be a week that, you know, students are going to be out of school and just going to be a, uh, an extended time before you get back to the football right. field again. So what will you be doing? Uh, well, it looks like we're, the only day we're probably going to be able to practice is today, and we're just going to focus on fundamentals and, and just getting better um, <clears throat> all around, just fundamentally sound. And, of course, the Buccaneers will return to action uh, after this bye week uh, for their starting uh, into Mid-Eastern Conference play at North Brunswick, so you'll be on the road for that first game. So, again, congratulations on your first win. Uh, the head coach of the Laney Buccaneers, Ashad Yeoman, now 1-3 with the Buccaneers. Got that winning streak going and want to keep it going Absolutely. for for the Bucks. So, again, this is the uh, sports roundtable. It looks like that uh, Hurricane Florence is going to be kind of taking over this week in terms of high school football, so there won't be any games to play. But we'll be back uh, in a couple weeks on the Sports Roundtable and talk about high school football once again. Till then, I'm Tom Lamont.